Welcome to Lobart Builds. We're getting started on these cab corners. First thing I did is slid this bed back about six inches, actually closer to 10, so I can get in here and get this cut out. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna verify that our cab corners are the right one, which I did already. They are the right, but you never know because they might send you the wrong thing or you might order the wrong thing. So first step's done. Next thing we're going to do is find where the rust ends, and we'll go from there. So this is what we're working with on this side, which is actually not bad. But as you can see, the cab corner is non-existent at the bottom, so we're going to get that fixed. Now this side's the fun side because the door was broke and nobody fixed it. Water got in here and ate it all up. But, yeah. Yep, this is the side. It's going to be the fun side. But we'll get her done. Let's get started. So our first step is we're going to grind down and find where the good metal is. Hopefully one of the two cameras will pick this up. Sometimes you gotta watch out, there will be insulation in here. So I can tell from the ripple in the metal that right about here is where a clean spot is. So this might be where we go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut up here and then I'll get the, the patch piece, I'll cut it an inch higher. And that way with all this stuff out of the way, I can hold the, fat, the patch piece up and it'll be right where it's supposed to be. And I can draw a line and then do a final cut. So yeah, we're pretty solid above that line. That's what we're gonna go with. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna run it along this line I already started, and then we're gonna cut here along this radius, and that's where we're gonna hide our welds and cut down. Let me go get a new blade and we'll get it done. Well, I had my camera on photo instead of video, so uh, what I did is just cut around here. Maybe I'll have something from that camera, we'll see. But yeah, we went ahead and cut out what we were talking about. So next, what we're gonna do, Let's get our patch piece and we're going to shoot for about an inch above this one. And I'll show you why when we get it done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plan on this mark right here. Measure. I'm going to go down four and a half from that mark. It don't have to be exact because this piece is what we're going to cut that piece to. And I'll show you how it works here in a minute once I get the piece cut. It's be hard to see. I can't find my silver marker. But like I said, just in general, it doesn't have to be perfect. Say about there. You probably can't see that, but I can. So I'm gonna use masking tape to try to keep it straight possible all the way across.
the tape will tell me if I'm going to crook it. Just do a reality check. About four and a half. Not too bad. So now we got it all cut out. We're going to put this over the top of it. And we're going to trace this. And then we're going to cut below the line that we trace. And I'll show you that here in a second. But now we got all that other stuff cut out of the way. We can put this on. And it's going to be really close to matching up. If you try to put it over too soon, the this piece will be out of alignment. Let's move on. nice we have this piece right here so I'll keep it snug I want to tip my sharpie From here, there's two ways you can do it. Some people will do a about a quarter inch below that, then overlap it and weld the top. Or you can do a butt weld, which is what I'm gonna do. So we're gonna try to cut it exact. Let's get cutting. So we'll start by welding this, and then we'll punch this in with a hammer and a punch, and just work our way around. Huh, this has got a little tab that bends over. That's cool. Alrighty, so our next step will be to grind this all the way around, get some weld through primer. Grind this all the way around, get weld through primer. We're not even gonna weld this, because we're gonna end up replacing most of this anyway. I gotta get this ground back down and I'm gonna cut this little tab off back here too. Let's cut it straight with this line right here. Before we weld we'll uh, we'll flap disc this or grind it and treat it. Is there still some structure here we'll cut the crappy parts off so let's get to grinding all right so we're going to take a brush and just knock all the loose stuff up underneath off around here and up underneath and then we're going to put some uh, heavy rust primer on it then tomorrow we'll grind off where we're going to weld and we'll put weld through primer there
probably end up hacking a lot of this off, but for now we're gonna get primed. When we get all done, we'll do the back side of this inner. What's left of it. Ow, be careful with this shit. We're not worried about any of this because we're gonna be replacing this anyway. We're basically gonna get this in and work our way that way. I'm hoping I can do it without removing the doors, but if I have to, we'll remove the doors. Luckily, we only have to do it on this side because the other side's not that bad at all. You gotta watch out some of these trucks, I think, especially Chevy. They have insulation in here, so you gotta make sure there's no insulation in here before you start welding, because you can catch the inside on fire. And that's, all right, we're gonna wipe it real quick with a rag, because basically we're just putting that primer on to try to encapsulate and maybe kill some of this rust. So it looks like I'm out of the heavy rust primer, so we're gonna use Rust neutralizer first, and then we'll just use regular primer. Like I said, once we get everything done, I'll get the back side of this cleaned up and probably put some undercoating on it when I do the frame. Hopefully this will just help it last a little longer. Tomorrow we'll grind all these spots where we're gonna weld and then we'll put weld through primer on there. Just don't want it to flash rust overnight. We have it welded in, but I'm out of daylight. See you guys tomorrow. All right, so we got it all ground down. For the most part, we're gonna go ahead and get some weld through primer on here. While that's drying, we're gonna go ahead and get our piece ready. So this is the primer we're gonna use. First off, we're going to drill some holes along here so we can do some rosette welds when we put it in. Then we're going to take the grinder and grind all the surfaces we're going to weld, and then we're going to do the weld through primer on it as well. Stay tuned. So now we got our holes drilled. Now we're going to grind both sides of those, and about a quarter inch around everything is going to get welded. So that way we can put our primer on, and, that'll, and we'll be ready to weld. So we got those holes lightly ground and all the way around here. And make sure you do your holes on the other side as well. Let's get some primer on this and then we'll get it over there. We'll start getting set up for welding. So I got it clamped in. The first thing we're gonna worry about is this surface right across here. We're gonna get these welded in. We'll pull it up and make it tighter. And then after that, We'll start taking a hammer and screwdriver. We'll work it around and even this stuff out. But this is the surface that we care about the most because that's what you're gonna see. So I'm gonna go get the welder set up and get this fine tuned a little bit more and we'll start welding this in. Typically you'd want to start with your first tack in the middle and then alternate every inch left to right. Um, this is a smaller panel 
and it's pretty thick so I wasn't too worried about it on this one but if you're doing like a long fender or maybe we'll do it on the rockers you want to alternate where your welds are because the heat will cause it to warp Typically on these repair panels, the radiuses do not line up, so I like to use a hammer, a screwdriver, and try to round them out and even them up with the original radius. just makes it look nicer. It takes a little bit of time, but it's worth it in the end. Again, I'm working my way right to left, just making my way around, molding the metal where I want it, then tacking, and getting it all lined up really nice. Alright guys, I'm going to get this ground down, and we'll start getting some Bondo ready. Okay guys, we got them all in there. We're going to get some rust neutralizer, and we're going to spray this down and then the first step I always do is I like to use fiberglass for the seam to waterproof it and then after that we'll put Bondo on primer her up and she's done ready for paint we got a little bit of a gap there I'm not too worried about that because we're replacing this rocker anyway uh, probably from when we had to pound in here and make adjustments to get that straight but overall i'm pretty happy we got one little hole on the corner there the steel was just weak but overall it went in really good and we'll fill that up with fiberglass but there you go and i tested the door a couple times it shuts perfectly fine all right let's get on this because we're running out of daylight I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video up here. Uh, we'll do the body work later on after we get all the other pieces in. Uh, the next video is going to be the rocker installation. So make sure if you're not subscribed, subscribe so you can see that one. I also put a poll up on the main page for low buck builds. I want you guys to choose the next project. So make sure you go in and put your two sets in. Also comment below if you like want to see more details on a certain thing, less detail, let me know. Like the videos, hate the videos, let me know. I like to read the comments from you guys, and you guys are what drives the channel, so make sure to leave a comment, like, subscribe if you're not subscribed, and I should have the rocker video up soon. Thanks for joining in.